I guess then the question I have, Bruce, is is what happened? The only thing that changed um, between the Big Ten making their announcement and our conversation today, well, I guess a couple of things have changed. One is uh, testing might might have uh, had a somewhat of a, a breakthrough with an antigen related test that um, that that may or may not be the game changer that it's supposed to be. <laughs> But it's out there now with um, emergency approval from the FDA um, and um, pressure from President Trump. I mean, th- those are the only two things that have changed. Um, and then yesterday, uh, a report that came out of what the director of athletic medicine of Penn State said at a local school board meeting on Monday that roughly 30 to 35 percent of Big Ten athletes who tested positive for COVID appeared to have hardening of heart muscles, myocarditis. So we're actually getting more information to prove that the Big Ten's decision might have been prudent to begin with. What the hell is going on, well, Bruce? Uh, I mean, to jump the, in on that last point, Rich, sure. on the, the, the Penn State medical doctor, that, that um, story or those comments is, were inaccurate. And so, you know, it was weird because I remember calling somebody there who was unfamiliar with some of those numbers and didn't think they were they were accurate. And I think what's happened, Rich, and this is a, I think this is one element of this, because Kevin Warren, the the new Big Ten commissioner, has been so reluctant to share any real specifics on their rationale. Unlike, quite honestly, the Pac-12, which has gone into pretty good detail, into it, the Big Ten has not, and so. Uh, I don't know, probably three weeks ago, the Athletic had reported that there were at least 10, at least 10 cases of myocarditis or heart, heart issues that the conference believed came from uh, COVID-related. Uh, when, once that happened, the Big Ten really didn't go anywhere with it. So we don't know what number of this, because some of the testing as it relates to cardiac MRIs, that is not as widespread or it's not as you know, were, were were these schools that were having big numbers early on, whether they had had, and I'm not saying it's necessarily just the Big Ten, but in other places we've seen Clemson that had a big number. We've heard NC State had big numbers of positives. Were those schools testing for myocarditis? Were they testing their asymptomatic players? And because there's been such limited transparency, and I remember talking to a, one of the, the, the ch- medical chair for the Pac-12's committee, and they said that there really was not like a registry set up in terms of for all of the FBS conferences to share information about what they're finding. And to me, that was kind of a head-scratcher that they wouldn't be doing that, because it's one thing for us to say, you know, because of people can say because of HIPAA or FERPA or these privacy laws, hey, we're not going to say that Johnny Smith tested positive right now. I get that. But if you're talking about the actual numbers of, of players who have been affected, how they've been affected by it, I mean, there's been such little transparency, and that has led to things like what has gone on, like that Penn State story you're talking, talking about yesterday that, that went viral for about eight hours mm-hmm. and then later in the day got clarified and corrected or debunked. And, again, I think that just speaks to the lack of transparency that we've seen from college athletics in the face of a pandemic. And, and inaccurate in the fact that uh, the the director of medicine was inaccurately quoted and that the numbers are off or his numbers were off or he never said it. I, <laughs> like what a, I think it was, I think he misspoke. At least okay. that's how the, the statement was made coming out of Penn State, that his numbers weren't accurate. Um, wow. It would also be a, uh, you know, if you're really small sample size unit was just taken the Penn State cases. So again, I, I think this speaks to though the Big Ten's inability to show any level of transparency or right. explanation. And the reason why I think this one of the reasons why this matters, Rich, is when we've heard so much about how the the I get why the Big Ten players and parents are frustrated because they've been asked to go above and beyond in terms of accountability and responsibility than any college football players have ever been asked to do. We're in a pandemic, right? And they, by and large, from what we've heard, have done that. And 
to find out that, they, hey, you're not going to get a chance to play and everybody else, not everybody else, but you know, the rest of the half of college football is going on, I do think it would have been incumbent upon the leadership of the Big Ten to give them at least more of an explanation. As I said, the Pac-12 did more of that. The Big Ten, for whatever reason, has just been unable or unwilling to share much of that at all, and it's, it's, they've created such a mess in the wake of it.